A while back, I used to do videos comparing a team's starting 11 now with their starting lineup 10 years ago, comparing the players in each position and picking one of them until I had a combined 11 by the end. Lots of people asked me to compare the most recent PFA team of the year, or FIFA Pro World 11, with one from a decade ago, but for some reason, I just never did. With the 2019 FIFA Pro World 11 still fresh in our minds though, I've decided to resurrect the idea and share it with you today. For those of you who don't know, FIFA Pro is the organisation that represents roughly 65,000 professional footballers from across the globe. Since 2005, FIFA Pro have run an award ceremony whereby they ask all 65,000 professional footballers to vote on one goalkeeper, four defenders, three midfielders and three forwards to make up the FIFA Pro World 11. Since 2009, the award has merged with FIFA to become the FIFA FIFA Pro World 11, and it's that first FIFA affiliated 2009 FIFA Pro World 11 that we focus on today, along with most recent awards in 2019. To be absolutely clear, this Combat 11 is based on the players' talents and performances during the 12 month period in question, whether that be 2009 or 2019, and not their ability or performances across their entire careers. Here are my views on what a combined 2009 and 2019 FIFA Pro World 11 would look like. Goalkeeper Ike Casillas vs Allison. There are no gimmies to get us started, as we're thrust straight into a very tricky decision between Real Madrid legend Ike Casillas and current Liverpool stopper Alison Becker. Casillas was almost universally regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world at the time, and he made an incredible five consecutive FIFA Pro World 11 inclusions in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. 2019 was Allison's first inclusion, and he saw off formidable competition from Barcelona's Marc Andre to Stegen and compatra Edison at Man City to take the crown. I think Allison is an excellent all round number one, but Casillas is among the greatest goalkeepers to have ever lived and in 2009, he was just about at his peak, so he takes this one. Right back. Dani Alves versus Sergio Ramos. There wasn't really a right back in the 2019 FIFA World 11, just three centre backs and a left back. Given that Sergio Ramos used to play as a right back, it makes the most sense to pick him as the centre back to put up against Dani Alves. Four Real Madrid players made the 2019 FIFA Pro World 11, which seems rather generous, for a club that finished third in La Liga and went out in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, albeit one of the four only spent half the year with the club. Sergio Ramos is obviously a world-class defender and he has had to drag this rail side forward kicking and screaming at times. Dani Alves was at his scintillating best back in 2009 though, combining lightning pace with genuine end product down the right flank in a Barcelona side that won the La Liga title, the Champions League, the Copa del Rey, the Spanish Super Cup, the UEFA Super Cup and the FIFA Club World Cup all in 2009. So he's my choice of right back. Centre back. Nemanja Vidic vs Virgil van Dijk. It's a really tough choice at centre-back between Nemanja Vidic and Virgil van Dijk, two players who often seem to be compared on social media, particularly by Liverpool and Manchester United fans. This is, I would suggest, the most difficult decision in this entire eleven. 2009 was the best year of Nemanja Vidic's career, and he was an absolute rock in a double-winning Manchester United side, scoring regularly by centre-back standards, and winning the club's Player of the Year award. Similarly, Virgil van Dijk was outstanding in 2019 as Liverpool won the Champions League, and he came second to Lionel Messi in 2019 Ballon d'Or voting. Vidic and van Dijk are completely different types of centre-backs, and for a back to the wall type job, you'd take Vidic all day long. However, I'm leaning towards Virgil van Dijk, who was such a titan at the back at Anfield in 2019. He brings real calmness and composure to Liverpool's back line, and as difficult a decision as it is, he's my first centre-back. Centre back, John Terry versus Matthias De Litt. With all due respect to Matthias De Litt, who had a stunning 2019 for a player of his age, it's a slightly easier decision when it comes to our second centre back. Matthias De Litt spent most of 2019 as a 19 year old, yet he captained Ajax, to a domestic double and a Champions League semi final, scoring 7 goals in the 2018 19 campaign alone. However, He's now just taking a little bit of time to adjust to life at Juventus, which is to be expected, but I don't believe 2019 De Litt is, as of yet, as formidable a centre-back as 2009 John Terry. Very much in his prime at that time, 2009 was Terry's fifth and final consecutive inclusion in the FIFA Pro World 11. 
a fantastic leader, a fierce competitor, and a world-class reader of the game, Chelsea themselves, only won the FA Cup and the Community Shield in 2009, but Terry was once again superb. Left back. Patrice Evra versus Marcelo. Marcelo may well go down as the outstanding left back of his generation, given his achievements at Real Madrid, but his inclusion in the 2019 FIFA World XI was a bit of a head scratcher as far as I'm concerned. The Brazilian superstar was dropped by Real at times, as both he and the team in general struggled for form, so perhaps his inclusion was largely down to reputation. In terms of their talents across their careers or at their best, there is certainly a debate to be had between Patrice Evra and Marcelo, but between their 2009 and 2019 form, there is not. Evra was firing on all cylinders as Manchester United won the double in 2009, and in the best season of the Frenchman's career, he has to come in over an out of sorts Marcelo. Central midfield. Xavi versus Frankie Dion. It's very much a question of the master versus the apprentice in our first central midfield spot. Frankie de Jong joined Barcelona from Ajax in the summer, and if he can have anything like the impact Xavi had at the Camp Nou, he will have had a very special career. De Jong is an extraordinary young footballer and a rare talent, but coming up against 2009 Xavi is an unenviable task. I've already listed off the trophies won by Barcelona back in 2009 when talking about Dani Alves, and Xavi was central to everything that was great about that Barca side under Pep Guardiola. His vision and movement allowed Barcelona the freedom to always play to their ideals, and Xavi was a master of making himself available to receive the ball at all times. 2009 was Xavi at his absolute peak, so even against a player I like a lot, this was a very easy decision. Central midfield. Steven Gerrard versus Luka Modric. A little bit like the decision between Patrice Evra and Marcelo, I wouldn't like to have to pick between these two in terms of their peaks or across their entire playing careers, but between a 2009 Gerrard and a 2019 Modric, there aren't too many doubts in my mind. It's difficult to say when Gerrard was at his best since his role changed so much throughout the years, but he has never been more dangerous going forward than in 2009. He scored 24 goals in 42 games in the 2008-09 season, playing much further forward, given the freedom of a free roll in behind Fernando Torres, thanks to the defensive assurances afforded to him by Javier Mascherano and Xabi Alonso. Gerrard won the 2009 FWA Footballer of the Year and Liverpool Player of the Year awards, as well as making the FIFA World Lem for the third and final time, and he's my choice in ahead of Luka Modric. Central midfield. Andres Iniesta versus Eden Hazard. Obviously, Eden Hazard isn't really a midfielder, but that's what he was included as in the FIFA Pro World 11. Even if he was, he wouldn't be getting anywhere near this 11. The Belgian maestro was superb in his final season at Chelsea, which was capped off with him playing a starring role in the 2019 Europa League final against Arsenal. Barcelona weren't busying themselves with Europe's secondary competition in 2009 though, as Andres Iniesta reached yet new heights under Pep Guardiola. Four Barcelona players made the 2009 FIFA World 11, and quite frankly, it could have been eight or nine, and ought to have been at least six. Iniesta played on the left of a midfield trio of Busquets, Xavi, and himself, which may be the finest midfield trio ever assembled. He wasn't particularly prolific, Barcelona had the likes of Pedro, Vera, and Messi for that, but he pulled the string spectacularly in alongside Xavi. Iniesta was a genius in possession, almost never surrendering possession of the ball, capable of beating players and threading the ball through the eye of a needle. He was outstanding in 2009 and comfortably sees off a world-class opponent to make my combined 11. Right wing. Lionel Messi versus Lionel Messi. At first glance, this appears to be a bit of a silly one that isn't worth dwelling on for too long since Lionel Messi made both the 2009 and 2019 FIFA Pro World 11s just as he has in every year since 2007. Messi began 2008 as one of the most highly regarded youngsters on the planet, but it was in the 2008-09 season that he elevated himself to another level under Pep Guardiola. He bagged 38 goals in 51 games in the 2008-09 season, which seemed ludicrous at the time, but now stands as his worst season in more than a decade. Messi was bewildering defenders and making everything look very easy back in 2009, but he was even better in 2019. Whilst Barcelona as a unit have got much worse, Messi has got even better. He won the Ballon d'Or in both 2009 and 2019, but there was no finer goal scorer, goal provider, or dribbler of the ball in 2019 than Lionel Messi, so it is the more recent Messi that makes our combined 11. Left wing. Cristiano Ronaldo versus Cristiano Ronaldo. 
If nothing else, this video shows the remarkable consistency of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo over the last 10 years. As if anyone needed reminding of that. We have a similar dilemma on the left flank with Ronaldo as we did with Messi on the right, although I'd say this one was easier to decide. 2009 was the year in which Ronaldo became the most expensive footballer on earth, having been brilliant for Manchester United and then making an impressive start to life at Real Madrid. The Portuguese superstar bagged 26 goals in his final season at Old Trafford and 33 in his first at the Bernabeu, impressive numbers which he would go on to smash in the coming years. Ronaldo's goal-scoring output was similar in 2019 to 2009, but he was undoubtedly a better all-round footballer in 2009. Centre forward, Fernando Torres versus Kylian Mbappe. It seems incredible to me that Robert Lewandowski didn't make the 2019 FIFA Pro World XI, but one can hardly urge Kylian Mbappe of an inclusion. The French phenomenon has just kept getting better, and he has backed up 39 goals in 43 games last season, with 18 goals in 19 games so far this season. Mbappe is frighteningly quick, really direct, and supremely confident in front of goal. Funnily enough, that would be an equally accurate description of Fernando Torres back in 2009. Torres scored 17 goals in 38 games in the 2008-09 season, and 22 in 32 the following term. Torres was truly special at Anfield at times, but picking him would be a sentimental rather than a reality-driven decision. Kylian Mbappe is the right choice, and he completes his combined 2009 versus 2019 FIFA Pro World 11. To recap, my combined 2009 versus 2019 FIFA Pro World 11 reads like this: Ike Casillas, Dani Alves, Virgil Van Dijk, John Terry, Patrice Evra, Xavi, Steven Gerrard, Andres Iniesta, 2019 Lionel Messi. 2009 Cristiano Ronaldo and Kylian Mbappe. Let us know which side you think would win if the 2009 FIFA World 11 was to play the 2019 11, along with any other video ideas you may have in the comments, but that's all from me for now. Thank you all for watching, please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it, or even if you didn't, and make sure you're subscribed to HITC Sounds.